there are specialists. You yeah. were you were always known for the zone running game. Yeah. Um, your Mike Shanahan teams. You made a lot of good running backs look great. Um, if I say Pete Carroll, Seattle Seahawks, what jumps out to you with Pete? Enthusiasm. He's excited about coaching. He's excited about relationships with players, not necessarily the X's and O's, even though he does run a great defense and what he does, but he's really into the coaches' minds and the players' minds, yeah. getting everybody on the same page. Kind of a and, psychologist. Yeah, very much so. And, and very much a rah-rah. He's always enthusiastic, and it's kind of fun to watch. It is. Um, when I say Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he is, uh, without question, he leaves no stone unturned in his preparation. If it has, it has to do in any area. X's and O's defense, X's and O's offense, the draft, free agency, how he handles his day-to-day business. About, you know, just knowing him as an assistant coach, I had a chance to talk to him, I don't know, 20, 25 times. Because every time that we would play, regardless of the game, if we won, he would come in our locker room and he, he would say, hey, let's talk about the game. I mean, there's not too many guys that do that. Right. You know, especially after, you know, you win. They come in, they, they just want to talk. Bill's really a unique guy, one of, one of my best friends. Um, one of my friends is Andy Reid, who I think is really clever. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know Andy well? You know, I don't know him well, but we've gone against each other a lot. What were Andy's teams? If you faced Andy that week, what did you tell your team? He's going to have a game plan for that week. So what he did, you know, you'd take a look at what you've done in the past, and he'd look at it, and, you know, you could see he was really into the X's and O's. Yeah, a schematic guy. Yeah, really trying to figure out what can help his football team win on both sides of the ball. Um, so Bill Parcells used to always say, you know, you can only do with what college gives you. Yeah. Cause once you get into a 16 game schedule for preseason, now they have less time, fewer OTAs yeah. that you kind of, you get the quarterback. So there's a kid at USC, Sam Darnold. And I, and I keep saying this to my audience, you're going to get whatever his traits were. I thought Manziel was cocky. And hard to coach in college, mm-hmm. and he was in the NFL. Right. Uh, I thought RG RG three was more runner than thrower. I didn't mm-hmm. think it was going to work in the NFL. Sam Darnold at USC. Now, when I watch him, I say he's a little bit Favre. He is a little reckless. Yeah. But I'm comfortable with a little reckless. Would you be if you needed a quarterback? Does reckless scare you? Not at all. Now, especially with a guy like him with his character, his teammates love him. I they mean, do. They do. I mean, coaches love him. There's I haven't heard one person say one bad thing about Sam Darnold, how he handles himself. And you love the way he plays because he can make any throw from any position. He doesn't have to step into it. He's a natural football player. That's somebody who's going to get a very good quarterback. Um, okay, Josh Rosen is more prototypical. Here's a th- here, I'll throw this at you. Mm-hmm. Comes from some wealth. Right. Uh, uh, very bright kid, right. was a tennis great, right. uh, 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 likes politics. Right. And I said the other day, if mm-hmm. I was a general manager in the world we live right. in, and it was Darnold and Rosen – I would. I think that would worry me. Am I out of my gourd? Not at all. To me, when people have, you know, come from a family that does have wealth, you know, what's his priorities? Does he want to be a football player? He throws the ball better than any quarterback I've seen. In years. Yeah. It's like, it looks like Aikman in college. Without a question. Maybe even better. And I love Troy Aikman, too. But when you watch just his natural throwing ability and his size, but it does scare you. You just don't know. You have to sit down and talk to him and really get a feel, and his coaches as well. Is there ever been a time, um, who was the best football player that you ever coached against? It's hmm. a good question. Lawrence Taylor? Well, Lawrence Taylor, you had no chance. You had to put somebody over there. So he's <laughs> going to beat him, you know. Really no chance? No, no chance, no, because he was just so quick, so fast. When I look back, though, even though I coached him at one time, was Jerry Rice, just the way he – his attention to detail, just like when you were coaching him, if he caught a five-yard out route, he would take it 90 yards. In practice. In practice, every time. So if you were, if you were practicing on the five-yard line and he caught a five-yard out, he's going to go all the way to the end zone. So you better be at least you know, going from the 50 because he's going to go 50 yards every time and score. That was his mindset, you know, that he wanted to be the best to ever play the game. And when I saw him have those type of attributes, I'm going, no wonder – he ran wild on us every every game. It's like Kobe Bryant's like that. Yeah. Like at practice, people like Kobe take he wouldn't leave the gym yeah. playing horse yeah. until Kobe beat you. <laughs> he would never drive home having lost a game of horse. Um you go back and you look at your relationship with John Elway. 
Um, it's really, it's, I mean, he's there and you're a big part of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really interesting. I, I've told people if you're 20 years old or early 30s, you didn't see Elway. I, my Elway story, it's quick. First NFL game I went to at Seattle Seahawks in the Kingdom, mm. and they used to give the Raiders fits. Um, and John Elway was there. It was a Denver game, and Elway was in a half shirt, and he was at the big 50 yard line, the Seahawk logo. And it was four hours before the game, and he was flicking his wrist down to the flag, and he was hitting the flag <laughs> and landing the ball. And I remember as a kid, uh, I was like, I, I couldn't. It was 50 yards, and it looked like he was flicking his wrist. When you coach John, and you know somebody is so smart and so talented, is it harder to coach a legend? To be honest with you, with a guy like John, it was really easy because he wanted to be good. He wanted to be great. So if you emphasize the little things, and you did it to the whole team, not just him, and you, you held people accountable, he loved it because he only cared about one thing, and that was winning. He was winning a Super Bowl. Everything else didn't matter to him. All the Super Bowls he went to and we lost, I mean, he was, he was just devastated. Miserable. Miserable, yeah. Terry Bradshaw said he never lost a Super Bowl, but he lost a game against the Raiders. He said, I had to go to get therapy. <laughs> like when I watched the Falcons this year. They're not over last year's Super Bowl. No. And I think fans look at that and go, now, it doesn't help that Kyle Shanahan left. <laughs> but was losing, Jerry Tarkanian once told me, he goes, I, I can't remember eight wins. The losing got me out of the sport. Yeah. No, it, it's hard. The one story I'll tell you that I don't, I haven't told very many people, but when I didn't go back to Denver after the 92 season, I stayed in San Francisco. John was so mad at me. He wouldn't, he asked me why I left. And I said, well, John, I, you know, I couldn't really tell him the reasons why I didn't take the job, but I did, you know, I had to have something ready for John. Cause he's going to, I said, be honest with you, a little upset over the length of the contract and the money. He said, well, what's, what kind of money? I said, no. He said, no, well, how much money is it? I said, it's a half million dollars at least. And I'm trying to get him a reason why I was leaving because I couldn't tell him the truth. And he said, I'll give you that. No problem. <laughs> that, that's what that's what he thought. He thought he wanted to win and he thought I could help him. He was ready to give me the half million dollars if I would have stayed. Now he finds out about nine months later and then we start talking again why I really didn't come. But those are the type of things that when you run into a guy that's going to give you a half million dollars as a player, it kind of gives you an idea on how important winning was to him. He would write you a check. Yeah. He said, no, it's done. He said, you need any cars? At that time, <laughs> he owned a car dealership. So, I mean, that's the type of guy he was. And that's why he thinks, and that's why he wins everything he's in. Well, I'm, I'm actually really happy for him. It's, it's been a wonderful life, and uh, your son's going to do very well in San Francisco. And he's intense, and he's smart, and it's. Um, I'm happy for you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for All having right. me on. Thanks, Colin. Mike Shanahan. Good NFL stuff. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1. First things first with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.